Morning YouTube, thanks again for coming and checking out my channel. Um, today I am going over the Intel SATA RAID controller, the ICH7R. Now, um, for the purposes of explaining this, I would suggest if you haven't watched the profile on another unit, or my other unit of this, I suggest you watch that first, then come and watch this. Um, this video will make more sense. Now, harking back to the previous video, I mentioned in it that I couldn't get the RAID controller to fire. Uh, last night, I put a second drive in to see if it would work. There is something wrong with the RAID system on that unit. So I have dragged out another one, exactly the same. See here. Where is it? There it is. XW4400 workstation. I have a couple of these left. And today I'm going to show you the installation and setup of a two-drive RAID system. The basics of it anyway. To start off with, down here, if I can get my fat fingers and the cables out of the road, and the camera focuses, I'll zoom in a bit, there we go, you'll see we have four SATA ports, SATA 0, 1, 2, and SATA 3, right there. Now, this is set up previous, exactly the same as my previous one, IDE Optical. Okay. Um, I'll preface this also by saying the two hard drives I've got, I've got no idea where I've put my stash of hard drives. I've just pulled out two random drives, one of 160 gig, I'll put it up the other way, and one of, there it is, 250 gig. Um, so for, normally speaking, I would use two of the same hard drives. I just don't know where I've put my stash of hard drives but for the purpose of this demonstration these will do so when you pick the when you get one of these um in theory it should have these four little screws screwed in here these are good for the mounting brackets especially if you've got them here and also for in there if you're mounting a second hard drive or even a usb card reader so what you do very simply you get your four screws at the very front and back. Don't put them in the middle, okay? You put them in the middle, you'll have trouble getting this thing to sit right. And you simply get it, and you line it up. It should go in reasonably easily. And lock into place. There we go. This one here, I haven't got any screws on it. Um, but similar setup. Put your screws in and line it up and drop it in. we will just put it in there for now, anyway. Then what I do, now, um, some uh, cases won't have a side mount facility. Obviously, you'd slip it straight in there. Um, I'll explain why you would reverse what I'm about to do if you've got to put the drives in that way. Next thing I do is get my SATA leads. Now, me personally, um, I know there's people out there who are going to say, oh no, I do it differently. Well, everyone does things differently. My first hard disk, this one here, drive zero, I always put into here. Ancillary after that is the rest of them. So if you have, in this case, say two hard disks and a SATA optical drive, or whatever I would put the two hard disks on SATA 0, SATA 1 and then the ancillaries after it in the case of this I can put four SATA hard disks in and an IDE hard disk or an IDE DVD rewrite and an IDE DVD ROM anyway so continuing with the setup we get our SATA lead here now working on the side of these is a bit easier than working in there okay and we simply plug it on, like so. There we go, see? Then we get our other end, and as I said, I plug it into the first SATA port. I just have to excuse my fat fingers and jumper here. Thus. Okay? 
Then we get our second saddle lead, right, and we plug it onto the second drive, drive one. Remember, drive zero, drive one. Get the other end, and then I personally put it into SATA one, SATA zero, SATA one. Two hard drives. Now, if you are, and then obviously you plug your power up. Now, in this case, when you've got one of these leads, when you've got your two SATAs and then your two Molexes, to make it a bit easier, I tend to plug on the bottom one first. As I said, this is the way I do things. Thus, in the case of some ATX power supplies where you might have two SATAs only, or you might have one SATA and one Molex, and you want to create, you want to put in a second drive, you'll obviously have to get a Molex to SATA converter. So that's the basic hardware installation of it. Pretty simple. Um, I'm using these long leads, I know. That's it. So you are now ready to create an array. Okay. Um, so what we'll do next is turn the unit on and create the array. All right, so we're all plugged up, as you can see. And as always, nice and safe. I know I'm gonna have people screaming at me about my electrical safety. Anyway, get our keyboard out. For those of you who are interested what my mobile workbench is, I work out of the back of my trusty 80 series Land Cruiser. Love this thing. Anyway, turn it on. Now, what you'll notice with this, and if you've bought one of these with everything on it, I suggest you, the first thing you should do is go into the BIOS. It's the first thing you should do. So we'll wait for the BIOS to come up, as you can see. Um, now for, I guess, all of HP, or some of HP, um, F10, at least for their workstations, get you into their BIOS. So we'll just wait for the BIOS to come up. Hopefully it comes up shortly. I don't know why this one's so slow. Oh dear, system beep. It's probably cranky. This one hasn't been fired up for a long time. Okay, so obviously you click English. Now first thing you should probably do is check out the storage options. Now you can see here under the storage options, if you want to create an, uh, an a, a array with this unit, you need to make sure that it is set to RAID plus AHCI. If it is not, it won't, well at least my experience with these are, it won't RAID properly. Okay, you click F10 to accept, and then you obviously save changes and exit. Then what we do is go in. Now the Intel RAID system is, again system boot, you'll see it pop up here, control I. So you hit control I. This is it. Intel Matrix Storage Manager Option ROM version 5.6.2.1002. As I said, it's an ICA7R with RAID 5 capability. Now, we've only got two drives in this, as you can see. If you had four, all four would show up. As I said, I don't know. Now, this one's already in a RAID mirror. So what you do first, obviously, is delete the RAID volume. Okay. Now, down the bottom of this setup utility are your instructions. All right, so you hit delete, and you hit, okay. I'm not sure why that was RAIDed, but anyway. Well, what we'll do now is create a RAID 0. Now, as I said, you can see here I have two different drives. Okay, two very different drives. Uh, yes. Okay. RAID 0. Now, you can call it whatever you like. Okay, you really, really can. It doesn't actually matter. So we'll call it volume zero for the purposes of demonstration, RAID zero, and you'll see that it's added the two together to give you 300 gig, okay? 
so that'll tell you now if we had more hard drives in this you'd be able to select what discs were what so say you got four hard disks you might want to create one raid zero and one raid one or two raid ones or two raid zeros or one big raid five okay so we'll change that there we go and we keep it like that you keep hitting enter and you create the volume and yes you want to create the volume and there it is 232 plus 149 or near enough damn it to 250 plus 150 for a total of 298.1 gig so it's added the two drives together so that's creating a raid zero okay now what we I'll get me fat finger out of the road again I do apologize for the camera I don't know what's happened to my good camera I'm having to use my mobile phone at the moment that's probably why it's a bit shaky anyway that's how to create a raid zero volume using the Intel IC87R in my previous video of this workstation I explained that the two virtualization systems that I have used in the past and still use now which is VMware's ESXi RAID and uh, Zen Server don't actually like this it does not see it as a true RAID essentially what this is is it is a software within the ROM chip down there where is it down in there that basically is very similar to Windows um, unlike Windows though in this case uh, if you create a RAID and uh, say it's RAID 1 which I'll show you in a minute if one drive fails it'll still boot under the Windows scenario at least in my experience if you use Windows to create a RAID uh, RAID 1 and one of your drives falls over Windows doesn't boot anyway so what we'll do now is get out of this and then I will show you how to create a RAID 1 scenario. Okay, so we've rebooted the computer. As you can see, once it starts up. Uh, here we go again. The one thing you'll find with these is they can be temperamental, these workstations. Um, just bear with me and I'll get back into the RAID controller. Okay. So here we are back in the RAID controller. So we'll delete our RAID 0. And you want to hit delete. And you want to confirm. Okay. So now we have two individual disks. So now we want to create a RAID 1 scenario. So we go back into here. We go to there. Now, we use our up and down arrows. As you can see there, change, up and down. And we change it to RAID 1. And what you'll see, even though we've got two different sized hard drives, under RAID 1, it will always take the lowest drive. So if you have a 72 gig drive and a 36 gig drive, your RAID 1 will only be 36 gig. Okay? RAID 1 always takes the lowest denominator. All right? So we now have the equivalent of two, even though this is a 250 gig drive, we have the equivalent Okay, the equivalent of 146 gig, or as this thing sees it, 149 gig. So we do that, and you'll see there's no stripe size for RAID 1. And we create the volume. Yes, and there we go. So volume 0, RAID 1 mirror, total space 149.1 gig, and it's bootable. Uh, I've just realized I've made a mistake in the explanation of RAID 0 uh, with this unit and I said it had combined the two. I stand corrected. It actually hadn't. All it did was add 50 gig to the mirror or to the array. So what I said was actually incorrect. I apologize. So I just thought I'd make a note of that very quickly. Now, so that's our RAID. Um... Going back to the profile of the IBM eServer 325 uh, and my ongoing distaste for the LSI Logic 1030 driver, which only gives you RAID 1, you'll notice this one gives you uh, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5. No RAID 6. OK? 
okay? Be aware of that. There is no RAID 6 with this one. I like to have options when I RAID. I do not like being forced to only do one type of RAID and either be forced to install another uh, RAID controller, which in some cases I've done in certain systems and it's failed. And when I say it's failed, it's literally failed. So this is another good one. Um, the good thing about this is Windows will see it as a RAID, as a hardware RAID. Uh, not sure about Linux or the BSD releases of Unix or Solaris. Only the fact that I've never actually been asked to install Linux or the Unix variants on these. Um, I've really never been, never had a need to install it, basically. All right, well, that's it. That should give you a general gist of how to get it going. One more thing I will show you just quickly. Um, so once you've created your RAID 1, go to Yes. Then you want to get into the menu, obviously. And you need to check across in... Uh, where is it now? I can't remember where it is now. Boot order. That's right. You need to make sure that your third that you're booting from that volume, Intel volume zero. Okay. You need to drag it up to there. Okay. If you leave it down the bottom, if you leave it down the bottom, it will not boot. Okay, it will crash. So you need to make sure your hard drive priority under this scenario, now obviously it's going to be different for other scenarios, I will be putting up other videos of setting up similar workstation server hybrid systems on their RAID setups, but under this scenario, specifically the XW4400, you need to make sure that the hard drive priority, that your RAID array is the first priority with your hard drive. If you leave it down here, you highlight it, it the, the, the unit won't boot. It just will not boot. So it needs to be up there. And then you need to accept it. And that's it. Well, that's the general setup of this. I hope that helps out those out there that are trying to set themselves up. Um, I will be putting up another server profile video soon, I hope. Um, but as I said, if you need advice or anything like that, of course, you can always contact me. And that is the full setup RAID control system for the HP XW4400. One final thing I'll say on these specific units, which um, uh, I thought I'd just uh, reiterate. If you are running four SATA drives, four SATA hard disks, and you're going to use it for a storage facility, put it into RAID 5. You'll lose a bit of space, but it means that if one drive fails, you haven't lost everything. Anyway, please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers, all.